Yeah, it's a wonderful read. I'm getting through all of it, but uh, as I said, you cut through the noise. And uh, Peggy, as always, we appreciate the time. Thank you, Brett, very much. Breaking tonight, a lot happening during this show. Uh, just announced, uh, the president-elect has selected Pam Bondi as the next Attorney General of the United States. I'll read from this announcement uh, from the president-elect. I'm proud to announce former Attorney General of the great state of Florida, Pam Bondi, as our next Attorney General of the United States. Pam was a prosecutor for nearly 20 years, where she was very tough on violent criminals and made the streets safe for Florida families. Then, as Florida's first female Attorney General, she worked to stop the trafficking of deadly drugs and reduce the tragedy of fentanyl overdoses deaths, which have destroyed many families in our country. She did such an incredible job that I asked her to serve as our Opioid and Drug Abuse Commission. Uh, during my first term, we saved many lives. Again, uh, she, he goes on to say she's smart and tough and is America first fighter who will do a terrific job as Attorney General. Again, Pam Bondi from Florida, the next uh, nominee for President-elect Trump, who obviously um, saw today that Matt Gates pulled his name from nomination as the votes were not there on Capitol Hill in the Senate uh, for Matt Gates as Attorney General Pam Bondi, now the name that the President-elect has put forward in that position. Okay, up next, why is it taking so long to count the Election Day votes in one major state? We'll take a look. The leaders of the FBI and Homeland Security Department refused to testify public to, uh, publicly today at a scheduled Senate hearing on global national security threats. It is a break from precedent following years of open testimony before that panel. Yesterday, a separate hearing in the House was also postponed. The Speaker of the House was critical of the move. That's ridiculous. They, they owe that to the American people. The FBI and Homeland Security both said further information should be revealed in a classified setting. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg is responding to criticism from airline executives who say the Biden-Harris administration overregulated them. Secretary Buttigieg says some of those airlines are making large profits despite new passenger protection rules. The comments come after the CEOs of Delta and Southwest said they hoped the government would be more pro-business when President-elect Donald Trump returns to office. We are more than two weeks out from Election Day and thousands of ballots remain uncounted in California. This comes as two Ridiculous. congressional races are still, at Shameful. this moment, too close to call. National correspondent William Lajeunesse has an update tonight from Los Angeles. California may be the world's tech capital, but two and a half weeks after Election Day, it's still counting votes. We made a choice that we wanted to take forever. We have election you know, quarter instead of Election Day. Why? California mails ballots to all 22 million registered voters. Counting takes longer than electronic voting. Ballots postmarked by Election Day still count up to a week after polls closed and rejected ballots crumpled or illegible those without signatures or envelopes can still be counted or cured if the mistake is corrected often with partisan help my life my love is curing ballots with my friends congresswoman nancy pelosi's daughter christine on x urged democrats to join her this week going door to door in the nation's tightest congressional race. I'm off to the Central Valley to cure ballots in California 13. That's where incumbent Republican John Duarte leads Democrat Adam Gray by 351 votes and several thousand outstanding. For the close races, yes, you will likely be receiving uh, either a call from a volunteer or a paid staffer. That's what Garrett Fahey does in Orange County, where Republican incumbent Michelle Steele now trails Democrat Derek Tran by 397 votes, with an estimated 10,000 still outstanding. We're down now to just processing ones that are challenged. We're waiting for voters to send in a signature cure statement, and they have until December 1st to do that. And that's where the partisans come in. Voters' identity and party affiliation is a public record. So when the campaign see an uncured ballot, the partisans head out to verify signatures and obtain an affidavit. How voters voted on the actual ballot remain secret. Right. William, thank you. Washington Capitals hockey superstar Alex, Alex Ovechkin is expected to miss four to six weeks with a broken leg. 
Just getting that word, Ovechkin is chasing Wayne Gretzky's all-time goals record. Ovechkin surged to the top of the league with 15 goals in his first 18 games this season. He was on pace to break that record and score the number 895 sometime in February. Now they're tracking it. Up next, the panel with reaction on President-elect Trump's new nomination for Attorney General and what happened to Matt Gates. First, here's what some of our Fox affiliates around the country are covering tonight. Fox 5 in Atlanta is the father of the teenager accused of killing two students and two teachers at an area high school pleads not guilty. Colin Gray faces 29 charges, including second-degree murder and involuntary manslaughter. Prosecutors say he was aware his son was obsessed with school shooters but did not take action. Fox 6 in Milwaukee is a Wisconsin man who faked his own death so he could abandon his wife and three children. Is telling authorities how he did it. The Green Lake County Sheriff says Ryan Borgward has been communicating from Eastern Europe. He disappeared by faking his drowning. The sheriff says Borgward has decided has not decided whether to return home as of yet. And this is a live look at Honolulu. One of the big stories there tonight from KHON, our affiliate, the recent discovery of historic streetcar tracks beneath a major street, a street during a repaving project has unearthed a forgotten chapter of Honolulu's history. The Honolulu Rapid Transit Company launched its electric streetcar system in 1901, replacing the horse-drawn carriages. The streetcars were eventually replaced by buses in 1941. The repaving project is now on hold. That's tonight's live look outside the Beltway from Special Report. We'll be right back.